So of course, one of the most important features to have is the credit report import. Um, we've set you up with a couple of different options. Uh, I can just show you how that works here. So we're just looking at a customer's homepage. Um, we have a one-click import system. So if we go up here to import the credit report, uh, as you can kind of see, we have three of them here. So we have Identity IQ, Smart Credit, and Privacy Guard. We do have a couple of others that we're going to be adding soon, uh, including the new FICO Identity IQ model. So watch for that coming up. Uh, one of the cool things on here too is that uh, you can actually test the login details. So either if you entered it um, during the initial onboarding process or if your client actually entered it in their uh, customer portal, um, the login information will appear here. So if, you know, if they provided it and you're not quite sure, you can just hit test login. It'll just do a quick check and let you know if it was able to access uh, their account uh, just with a quick message and that way you can continue. Um, so I'm not going to actually do a live import on here because the last thing I want to do is show customer information. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and flip over to the other screen. Um, so basically, once you hit pull credit report, you're going to get a little, you know, waiting symbol. Uh, and as soon as the import is complete, it's going to look like this. All right. So um, one of the things that we decided was important for this um, on the initial round that you pull and of course on the re-import later is being able to have the customer information handy uh, without having multiple windows open. Um, so what we've done is we've kept, as you can see here on the right, all the important information, you know, addresses, social security, date of birth, uh, all that kind of stuff. So you can actually make sure that they're correct on the report. Um, and one of the other cool tools as well is we have a, uh, a sticky note system, which you can't really see on the screen. It's kind of on the bottom right but I'll show you what that looks like. So we get this little pop-up widget here. So essentially, this is gonna be your running notes. Uh, so as you're going through here, you can make notes, it will automatically save, um, and you can even create new tasks as well while you're doing it, if you wanna set up reminders for yourself uh, or anything of that nature, all of that's handy right here. So this thing can move all over the screen and um, a really cool tool to have. So this is gonna be your first view of the import. It's going to, of course, show the credit score, all the names, addresses, date of birth. I've blurred everything out on here, uh, obviously, to protect identity, um, but you get the idea. So if there were a couple of these that you needed to dispute, um, quite simply, you can just check them off, right? whichever ones uh, are incorrect. You can add your dispute reasons down here at the bottom, uh, any instructions that you want to include, and any additional instructions will go in this box at the bottom. A little further down, we got the full credit summary. Uh, top level overview of everything. Next section, you got your credit inquiries. Uh, so in this case, there's a couple. Uh, and of course, you can just one click to dispute them. Add your, uh, it's obviously a negative status for these. So you want to hit your dispute reasons in here, instructions, and so forth. Um, if for some reason something is positive, obviously on the um, inquiries, it's not going to be. If you can change the status to positive. That will come into play a little further down with the real accounts. So you're going to see initially a collapsed view of everything. So you can do a quick scan to see how many items they actually have. You can click on any of these to uh, expand it. And as you can see from the green color and the little green smiley face, this one's a positive one. And uh, then, of course, you've got a little frowny face for ones that are negative. All right. So um, if we want to take a look at an example here, I'll just uh, come right down. Uh, before I show you that, actually, so we have a skip option as well. So, of course, when we're done doing all of our, our edits and changes, it's going to... Um, you know, create a final list of all the items that we're going to dispute. It's going to include everything by default, positive, negative, everything. Um, so you can choose to skip it here, or you can choose to remove it uh, later on. A lot of people like to keep both the positive and negative uh, in their master list of what they're disputing, just so they can keep track of all the accounts. That's up to you. Uh, so here's an example of one of the uh, accounts. So of course, it's going to have all the relevant information in here, just blurred out for demo purposes. And uh, down at the bottom, it actually has the entire um, date history of all the payments made, payments missed, which is obviously important. And then uh, down here at the bottom, it's got your statuses, right? So whatever you decide that you're going to uh, dispute, you can change that um, to positive. Well, actually, you can change it to positive if it is. But you know, by default, it's going to show negative if there is a problem anyway. So chances are you'll probably leave that there. Um, you'll be able to change these two on round two import. Once you get a positive result, if the system doesn't automatically recognize it as positive, but you know that it is, you can change it. 
And again, down here, we get your creditor and furnisher. So in this case, it's the it's going to automatically be there uh, based on the import information. Uh, but for some reason that it's not or there's an error, um, you can actually do add creditor or furnisher right here. Get a little pop up, punch in their address, phone number and any notes that you want on it and just add it there. Um, same thing for reasons. So we've included a whole bunch of, you know, common reasons. Um, this list is just your default. You can actually go into your admin and remove all of these if you want to and do your own complete custom list or you can just add to what's already here. All right. So we'll just pick one here completely inaccurate. And then we have the instructions. Same thing. We've kind of loaded a whole bunch of them in here, but a lot of people will customize this to their own uh, familiar liking. And once again, you can add a, an additional reason to the list right here, add additional instructions right here as well as you go. So over time, it's going to build that, you know, master list of all the stuff that you regularly use. Um, so once you're done going through all these accounts and you've done everything, um, quite simply save and close. Um, and then it'll bring you to the disputes tab. So once you're done with the initial import, uh, and you made all of your changes in there. Upon saving, you're gonna arrive here at the disputes tab. So this is gonna list out all the items that were on the report, positive and negative. Now, it's showing here a couple that are already in dispute. Uh, in this demo example, we've already been through round two. Uh, but on the first round, you know, you're know, you just gonna see positive and negative. Um, and then of course, you can expand these to actually see the details right here on the screen. Now, I blurred everything out for obvious reasons. Uh, so this one here, I just hit the little button, expose the information. Um, so that way you can quickly go through and you can edit them, you can view them to make any final adjustments that you need to do before generating letters. Now, because this has been through uh, a round two already, we actually have the dispute history. So it's going to show you, you know, three months and two days ago, we sent this particular uh, one to Experian, this one to TransUnion, uh, and you can actually view the uh, PDF, which has all the, uh, the letters in it. Uh, so it's a really good tracking tool, uh, so you can kind of figure out where you're at uh, and see any history. All right, now, um, in addition to pulling in all this stuff automatically, if for some reason you wanted to add um, additional items, there's a quick add feature. All right, you get this little pop-up right here. You can define, you know, what type of account it is, uh, who the creditor and furniture is, uh, the instructions, the dispute reasons, and any additional notes. All right. So if you had the information, um, there's actually a cool tool here. So you can have this option selected. This is the same for all bureaus, in which case, if you start typing something here, it's actually going to appear in all three columns. So you don't have to copy, paste, copy, paste, uh, just a little bit of a time saver, or you can choose different for each bureau. Um, and then you can manually enter it each time. You know, so in the instance, we start typing something here, as you can see, it pre-fills it for you. And at the bottom, you can select, you know, is it a positive, is it negative? Uh, you can save and add another one real quick, or you can just save and close and be done with that. Um, there is actually a longer version of that. That's sort of the quick add. So if you wanted to do, you know, much more detail on adding one, you can just use the main um, add new item one. So it's kind of the same as that little pop-up. It's just showing a lot more information if you want to get really detailed with it. When you're done, just hit save. Um, on a note with the um, creditors and furnishers, on the first round when you're doing this, um, before you can generate any letters, of course, you're going to need addresses that go along with all the creditors and furnishers, right? Um, most of the time, um, you know, some data will be imported on that report, um, but there are going to be a couple of, you know, a bunch of them you're going to have to add an address uh, you know google it find out what it is or, or get it from your your customer uh, make sure the address is added before you go to letter generation um, it won't include that item um, if there is no address present so just kind of a double check there